Hi, welcome to our virtual picture book party. My name is Erin and I'll be your host today. This year we are offering book parties a couple times a month. We have four different presenters from our Child and Family Library Services Department and they're each going to talk about five books. You'll see a slide for each book and then they'll have about a minute to talk about their books. So this is going to move pretty fast. But don't worry, you don't need to write anything down. I'll post a link to all of the books in the comments. If you have any questions or comments about the books, please feel free to put them in the chat and one of us will respond as soon as we can. This month, our theme is STEM. We have selected books that fit this theme in various ways. I'm going to now have our presenters introduce themselves. Please say your name and your position at the library. I'll have Elaine get us started. Hi, I'm Elaine. I'm a Storytime Specialist. Hello, I'm Molly and I'm an Early Literacy Librarian. Hello, I'm Tina and I'm a Storytime Specialist. Hi, I'm Amika and I'm a Storytime Specialist too. And I'm Erin, I'm the Children and Family Library Services Lead. Thanks everyone, go ahead and mute yourselves until it's your turn to share a book. We'll go ahead and get started with Elaine first. For my first book, I have Building Zaha, the story of architect Zaha Hadid, written by Victoria Tentler Krylov. This book is actually a biography and about amazing Iraqi British girl Zaha Hadid, who excelled at math and loved to study lines and shapes in buildings from construction sites and mosques to things in nature. From the time she was little to adulthood, she loved scale models of buildings. Her dream. Um, so her dream was to become an architect and build impossible and beautiful structures. The illustrations in this book were created by watercolor and Adobe Photoshop and show her imaginative new designs and creations. This whole book depicts her failures and her successes in, in this book, which remain her legacy today. I love how Zaha never gives up despite her many setbacks in the book. The author speaks about Zaha's goals of her buildings. One was harmony between humans and their surroundings, and the other a sense of change and movement. This book will make you do more research to see all of her buildings to see if you think Zaha Hadid achieved her goals. I certainly think so. What an inspiration. I recommend this book for elementary school children that want to learn about buildings or anyone who wants to learn about overcoming seemingly insurmountable obstacles and learning the difficult life skill of resilience. If you like this book, you may want to read Emmanuel's Dream by Laurieann Thompson or She Persisted by Chelsea Clinton. All right, here we have Skulls by Blair Thornburg and Scott Campbell. Your skull is very important, but how often do you think it? I'm pretty sure not nearly enough. Your skull does so many amazing things for you. It protects your brain, has holes for seeing, hearing, and eating, and gives your face that great shape. Even better, everyone you know has a skull. They take time to grow big and strong, but in the end, it's worth it. You really should tell it just how you feel daily. No bones about it, this book is great. And if you love this book, here are two bonus suggestions for ages four to eight. There's a Skeleton Inside You by Edan Ben Barak and Julian Frost. And Give Me Back My Bones by Kim Norman and Bob Kohler. Caution, illustrated by G. Birmingham and written by Tony Buzio. Buz Buzio, uh, a former elementary school librarian. Road signs are some of the most common and easiest reading a child will do. This Lift the Flap book gives children a tactile experience 
with the shapes as they turn the pages. The flaps are designed to give children an opportunity to guess what comes next. As your child gets older, you can talk about what problem the sign might be solving as an introduction to human engineering. Of course, my favorite page is in the book that directs you to the library where you will find this great book. A House by Kevin Hanks was published this year by Green Willow Books. It is geared towards our youngest emergent readers. The illustrations are simple, uncluttered, and present explicit clues to help with the text. Simple minimal text per spread that asks a spatial, a shape, or a counting question, or just gently leads the reader to match what they've read to the illustration. I think it's implied that this minimal text is an invitation for adults to continue the conversation with their little ones. Like what else is in front of the house or above the house? What other shapes do you see? What else can we count in the picture? This book could be read in a couple of minutes or longer depending on the conversations happening while reading. Kevin Hanks has won numerous awards for his contributions to children's literature, and you will find many of his works in our collection, along with this title. What a treat with this one. It's called Drop, an Adventure Through the Water Cycle, and it's written by Emily Kate Moon. So get ready to follow the greatest and cutest little drop through the water cycle. A small drop is personified throughout this book depicting the journey that one drop takes through her never-ending cyclical life story. Meet Little Drop. The author and illustrator, Emily Kate Moon, does a fantastic job showing Little Drop 4.5 billion years ago from the birth of the earth. Little Drop sees the dinosaurs, lakes, and seas, and the world. She flies through the air and the wind and the clouds, turns electric during storms, and becomes a superhero falling to the earth as rain. She's even been hail and snow. What an adventure! She may be sucked up through the roots of a plant, or drank by a bear or a bee, or you. What a ride. It is so fun to watch drop through her life. I recommend this book to people of all ages that are ready to smile and laugh at little drop silliness and to learn about the water cycle. But this book was written for children ages four to eight years old. If you're looking for more books with personification, you might like My Friend Earth by Patricia McLachlan, Spoon and Little Pea by Amy Krauss Rosenthal. All right, we have our arithmetic series, Arithmetic Add Up and Arithmetic Take Away by Anne Marie Stevens and Gia Lu. Math gets a farm, a fresh, fun makeover with these two math stories. In Arithmetic Add Up, Mama Hen and her 10 chicks show us multiple ways to add them up. Meanwhile, Look out for a shy mouse who wants to join in the fun. He's hiding on every page. In Arithmetic's Take Away, the chicks are getting ready for bed. And just like human children, the minute they hear the word bedtime, they scatter. It's up to Mama Hen to round them up. Through both books, you'll have the opportunity to work out Mama Hen's equations along with her. If you're really into making math fun, you can try Balance the Birds by Susie Garamani and Baby Goes to Market by Atanuke. And all three of the, all four of these books are great for ages three and up. My next book is Dozens of Dachshunds, written by Stephanie Commonson, illustrated by Zoe Persico. This is a fun way to introduce math by counting the dogs in the parade. The author has a dachshund named Hen Harry, who she says barks very loud. Many cities have festivals and parades to celebrate these long and short dogs. This rhyming book has diverse characters that are attending the parade. 
including this child in a wheelchair. The first and last pages include pronunciation help and a picture of the dogs. Children can compare sizes, colors, and types of coats. Woof, woof. I Will Eat You, written by Giada Francia and illustrated by Agnes Baruzzi, was published in 2016 originally in Italian. The English translation was published in 2018 by Holiday House, but I just discovered it. This clever fold-out book is probably intended for kids around five years old, but it is an awesome book to illustrate the food chain to any school-age kiddo. Adults might learn something too. For example, I did not know that badgers ate frogs or that jaguars can eat alligators. In this book, you and your kiddos can discover all kinds of surprising predator-prey relationships from habitats all over the planet in a fun, non-scary way. It introduces the fact that all living things depend on other living things for food. Reading this with your preschool-aged little one would invite great conversation. I think kindergarten age and older would really enjoy lifting the flaps and appreciate the humor through independent reading. If I was still teaching elementary school, regardless of the grade, I would have this in my classroom library. In fact, I want it for my home library for whenever my nieces and nephews come over. Don't just believe me, though. Check it out first from our library collection. Up next on my favorites list is Goodnight Astronaut, written by Scott Kelly and illustrated by Izzy Burton. Are you great with technology? Can you use computers and complicated gadgets? Do you dream of being an astronaut when you grow up like our friend and Goodnight Astronaut, Scott Kelly, and his twin brother? This book may be for you. On one level, this book is just a good night book. But if you study and you look at those illustrations, you will discover that this book is a true story about a young man and his twin brother that dared to dream about being an astronaut and use different technologies from sleeping in a tree house as a child to sleeping 62 feet below the ocean surface in a submarine as an adult. You'll see a plethora of places that he slept and experienced in his preparation as an astronaut. We see him learning how to steer at the helm of a huge ship, exploring the high seas with a compass, and his whole life culminates in piloting the space shuttle Discovery and sleeping in a bag hanging on the wall. If these are your dreams too, pick this book up and discover the world of technology and what it can do for humanity and what it can do for you. This is Bird Count by Susan Edwards Richmond and Stephanie Pfizer Coleman. Do you have a budding scientist who wants to get started today? Well, then try being a citizen scientist. This means that the public can help with real scientific studies, just like Ava and her mom in this book. Every year, her and her mom participate in counting up all of the birds they see and hear, and then identifying their species. She sees Canada geese, a red-tailed hawk, turkey vultures, and so many more. Along the way, Ava and mom show us how to make tally marks. But, Ava just can't seem to find the bird she really wants to count. In the back, you'll learn all about the birds Ava found and can find out more about citizen scientists. If this sounds interesting to you, you can go to citizenscience.gov for projects that you can participate in. And if you really like birds, you can try these books, How to Find a Bird by Jennifer Ward and Diana Sudika, and Knowing the Name of a Bird by Jane Yolen and Jory Vanderland. Glasses by Laurie Haskins Horan, illustrated by John Joven. Eureka, great things happen when science crosses history. 
I've been wearing glasses since the second grade, and I couldn't do my job without them. Our story starts around 45 CE, or Common Era, and shows us this page with a simple description of the eye, and it explains how it works. The pages show the improvements made by each inventor and how we now have the eye doctor with his chart to help us find the right glasses. Yay for my glasses. Boxitex by Kim Smith was published by Clarion Books in 2020. This story follows a clever and creative little girl who can build extraordinary things out of ordinary cardboard boxes. She builds at home. She builds at school. Then she meets someone at school who shines at being a box detect too. Will they be rivals? Will they be friends? More importantly, what will they build? After you find out, check out the back matter where you are invited to experiment with cardboard and be a box detect too. There are easy supply lists and step-by-step -step instructions to build a tunnel and a castle. A fun read with built-in engineering extension activities. Choose to check it out in hardback or ebook format. Ah, this is my favorite, maybe, for the whole year, the STEM one. So um, this is called Grow, and it's written by Joanne Early Macon and illustrated by Stephanie Pfizer Coleman. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to grow up if you were an acorn? or a deer, or a frog, or a turtle, or a butterfly, and many other animals in this book, then this book is for you. Grow shows how different animals and plants grow, including us as humans. The illustrations are vivid and ripe for physical duplication. The grown-ups of all ages and ethnicities depicted in the illustrations are so engaged. They are doing all the actions along with the children, which is my favorite part, and it made me smile. Finally, the text of the book is beautiful, written with both figurative language and literal language. The science of the book is solid, too. The terminology is completely accurate, and we learn lots of great vocabulary that will get children ready to read. This book will bring a smile to your face, too, and you'll want to act like the animals. <laughs> I recommend this book for ages three to seven or those that like to pretend, pretend to be something else. Also, due to the growth theme and the important concept that everyone is unique and valuable, I would recommend this as an ideal preschool graduation gift. Next up, we have My Brother the Duck by Pat Zutlow Miller and Daniel Wiseman. When my sister was born, I called her the alien, but I was old enough to know that she really wasn't from outer space. Stella, however, is convinced her brother is a duck. Her hypothesis is airtight, but she needs some hard hitting evidence. She then recruits her best friend, Carla. Together, they go through the steps of the scientific method. But what will she do if her brother really is a duck? Only time will tell if her theories prove to be correct. And you know the saying, if it looks like a duck, sounds like a duck, it's probably a duck. This book is great for ages four to seven and is perfect for any budding scientist or anyone who has a new sibling at home. If you like this one, I suggest Secret Secret Agent Guy by Kira Bigwood and Celia Crampion, or Alphonse, There's Mud on the Ceiling by Daisy Hurst. Next, I have Secret Code Inside You by Rajani LaRocca, MD, illustrated by Steven Salerno. This book jacket says it all in this beautifully illustrated book. Why can't humans breathe underwater? Why are some people tall and others short? Why do puppies grow into dogs? And why do babies grow into people? This book explores all this and more flowing 
rhyming text explaining cells, genetics, and DNA that is simple and easy for children. This page shows a picture of our body, which looks like what it looks like inside and out. The end pages include a page my husband enjoyed, which is called The Banana Experiment. Check out this book so that you can do the banana experiment at home. Enjoy. It's just the right time of year for this one. And I have a special place in my heart for Scooby-Doo because I grew up watching his show. The Scooby-Doo Cookbook, Kid-Friendly Recipes for the Whole Gang by Katrina Jorgensen was published in 2020 by Capstone Editions. The treats one can make from the recipes found within are suitably creepy for October and strangely appealing. It's formatted really well for engaging in fun and delicious math. There are handy tools included like conversion tables for teaspoons to grams and Fahrenheit to Celsius. And of course, one must follow the steps in order and add the correct amount of ingredients together. If you pay attention, you will get to eat your results. I wish math always had such yummy gratification. I haven't actually tried any of the recipes yet, but the possum punch looks very refreshing. However, since it's getting chilly, perhaps a more ghoulishly appropriate beverage could be the swamp brownie cocoa featured here. I'm sure either would go well with the mystery math pizza. Bon appetit. My last title, um, I chose Usha and the Big Digger by Amitha Jagana Knight, illustrated by Sadia Prabhat. This, was, this is such a beautifully illustrated and engaging book about three Indian American girls that are practicing cartwheels and looking up at the stars. They all see something different in the constellations above their heads, depending on their perspective. They are looking at things differently spatially, and that makes a different picture for each one. Arti sees the Big Dipper, Gloria sees a kite, while Usha sees a Big Digger. We learn that orientation and point of view can affect what we see, which is an important geometry concept and science concept. This is a wonderful math read and a great building friendships with cousins and sisters read too, a perfect mix of STEM and story. At the end of the book, we learn about how people all over the world see different pictures in the same stars. I wholeheartedly recommend this book to children ages three to six years old. If you want to hear more about stories in the sky, I suggest Zoo in the Sky, a book of animal constellations by Jacqueline Mitten. Last up for me is I am Josephine and I am a living thing by Jan Thornhill and Jackie Lee. Have you ever really thought about who you are? Josephine charts who she is in relation to other life forms, but she also knows that there is no one just like her. Along the way, she asks readers to help her find humans, mammals, living things, and so much more. She'll have you asking yourself, but who am I? I like this book for ages three and up, and it's a great way to encourage children to think about all the different ways they fit into the world. You could also try Outside You Notice by Erin Aladdin and Andrea Burnett, and Our World is Relative by Julia Soy and Molly Walsh. My last book is Someone Build the Dream, written by Lisa Wheeler and illustrated by Lauren Long. Another great book of human engineering that children can see every day. The author, Lisa Wheeler, grew up in a family of steel workers and welders and who we see in this book. I was pleased to see women and men planning and building with these great illustrations. Once again, I chose a great rhyming book, which helps children hear the sounds in the words and gets them ready to read. My favorite page shows an exciting example of someone's dream of an amusement park. Take this book home and start building your own dream.
The You Wouldn't Want series from Scholastic is written and illustrated by many talented people. These books are found in the nonfiction section separated by topic. There are a bunch based on some unpleasant experiences in history like you wouldn't want to be a Civil War soldier or you wouldn't want to work on the Hoover Dam. Some blend modern invention in history like you wouldn't want to live without toilets. But since we are focusing on STEM titles, I wanted to highlight a couple of technology ones like you wouldn't want to live without coding, you wouldn't want to live without the internet, and you wouldn't want to live without cell phones. Admittedly, this entire series is geared for our oldest age group today of around eight years old or older because there is a lot of text, but the way it's laid out is so engaging. Comic book style conversations, little blurbs with interesting fun facts, great diagrams, etc. Of course, a very helpful glossary in the back. These books are organized well also. What is the topic? How did it evolve into being? How can this technology be used, abused, and what possibilities may lie ahead? When you do your research in our catalog, first think about what topic specifically you're investigating, then start typing in the search bar you wouldn't want. I dare you not to be distracted by all the cool topics to explore from this series. Happy reading. All right, that's our titles for today. Even with picture books, we have a lot to say. I will post the I will be posting a link to the book in the comment section. And thank you to our panelists for the tough job of picking just five favorites for this session. To sign up for story times and other programs, both in-person programs and virtual programs, visit the events tab at arapahoelibraries.org. You can also find more book lists, links to storytime videos, activity ideas, and lots of other resources on our zero to five page. Just browse, just browse the browse the library tab. Sign up for our newsletter for regular updates on new programs and services. We're all done for today. Thanks for watching. Bye.